after I got this thing fired up the other day, I, I think I'd made the comment that I was going to rip out all the electric and all that stuff and go ahead and put a 12 volt uh, one wire alternator on. This guy here, whenever I got to double checking, I got to looking around and I saw where the original owner had done some, some disconnecting as well. So one of the things he had disconnected was this wire right here, which is leaving the cutout. All right, now cutout is uh, it's one of the one of the variations of a voltage control that they had on the uh, on the old generators. Now some of them had the a voltage regulator, and then others just had nothing more than a cutout. The generator, once it starts generating, would essentially run wild if you didn't have some kind of a control on it. So they incorporate in the light switch a little resistor and and a uh, different ways of charging by different positions of the light switch. You could pull your light switch out the first uh, the first click and it would turn your lights on, pull it out the second click and it might give you a low charging rate which would cause the cutout to once it gets to a certain level it would cut out and stop generating. Or you could pull the light switch out to the third setting and it would allow the generator to put out more uh, amperage before the cutout cuts out. The cutout is no more than a uh, nothing more than a current relay. A current relay is just a coil or a, a, an iron core with a coil of wire wrapped around it. And uh, whenever you run voltage through it, that'll induce an electromagnetic magnetic force that will draw your contact closed. You cut that wire off, and it would open up. The resistor in the light switch is what caused this to cycle up and down, as far as I know. Well, I got to checking. I found out that. This wire here, the previous owner had disconnected, as well as this one here, and I haven't found out what this one does yet. But I went ahead and checked this, and guess what? I've got like 19.2 volts output on my generator. Okay, so what I'm going to do, in talking to my brother, he was telling me that, well, go ahead and check, see if this is a three brush generator. Some of them had a, a third brush, and it was adjustable. Typically, the third brush alternator was used with in conjunction with the cutout. A regular a standard alternator, as I understand, would work with a voltage regulator. So what we're going to be able to do, I hope, is undo this screw right here, and that's going to allow that movable brush in there to rotate just a little bit, and I should be able to decrease my output voltage right here from 19.2 down around 14.6 or 7 to, to charge the battery. Then we've got to reattach this, and we have to make sure that the the uh, the resistor in the light switch will control the output so we don't boil our battery dry. With no control on the output, you will literally boil your battery dry. It seem, seems like to me to move that third brush, I think the motor should be uh, not running. Too much stuff can happen in there. Okay, here's the thing. I had to take it off of the tractor. This is the screw that we need to loosen up right here. You have to figure out which one of these is the movable, the movable brush. And it happens to be this one right here that's fairly much in line with it. And if you see, I can slide it this way. I can slide it that way. Alright, and it's changing the position that the brush comes in contact with the, um, the armature. So what I'm going to do, start out with it right about there and it had 19.2 volts. I'm going to roll it back this way because logic tells me if we cut the distance between the second and the third one, that should reduce the output. However, I don't know if it's going to reduce amperage output or voltage output. So the only thing I can do in trying to figure this out is adjust it back. Adjust, I know where it was where it started, 19.2. Adjust it here and see if I get a voltage output difference. If so, we're good to go. If not, back to the drawing board. Well, it, it's too hard to actually get all the adjustment stuff in there on video. But you have just gonna have, you're going to have to take my word for it. I loosened that up. I moved the uh, third brush all the way one direction to, to affect a great change in output, if in fact it's going to make a change. And it made no change in voltage output. I don't know what it did to the amperage. Don't have an ammeter hooked up. And we don't have any load anyway. Then I went ahead, shut it back off, and then adjusted all the way the other direction as far as it would go and fire it back up, virtually no change. I still have 20.4, 19.2, whatever on a digital meter. I don't get any change in it at all. Now this being a three brush generator is more than likely designed to be operated with a cutout and not an external voltage regulator. Chances are, 
this is going to be a generator somebody can purchase if they'd like. I know it, it's got output. I just can't control it. And I'm not a bit smarter now than I was a minute ago. Hey, you know, you win a few, you lose a few, man. So I'm just going to bypass that step and do like I should have done to begin with, is go ahead and eliminate that and put on a uh, one more alternator. These smaller internationals, this little H, that generator is completely held up underneath that, that sheet metal enclosure. And it's a, of a certain diameter. They're pretty much all about the same, about the same diameter as a, a starter, you know. But you can't use a, a standard Delco 10 SI frame or 12 SI frame or that 3125 or whatever it was I put on that Massey Harris. Um, so because the diameter is so large, some guys will just go ahead and take a sawzall or a torch and cut out the side of the sheet metal. It just looks like the devil. And you can't drop it down to tighten up the belt because of all this casting here. Here's your distributor drive casting and then your oil fill and all that stuff. So you're, you're somewhat limited. So you want to get a small diameter. And what I've come up with is I come up with another, uh, another one wire, uh, very small diameter Duralast alternator. It's internally, uh, internally regulated and self-excited. And it's of a diameter that's actually smaller, physically smaller than the, the, alt, the generator that's on there. So I'm going to adapt this bracket, put a new belt on, and mount it right up here. And it's not going to interfere with the sheet metal. So that's the task. In the For What It's Worth department, this is a, uh, a Model D, DL, Delta Lima George. I don't think that's right. 12180-SEN. SEN means it's a self-exciting uh, self uh, alternator. 12 volt, and then there's the, uh, the, the actual number of it. It's also got a tech support line. You can contact them. It's got a couple of extra terminals on the back, and there was nothing marked on the paperwork or on the alternator, so I actually called tech support and found out that's for automotive use. One of them gets out a partial, partial output voltage that you're supposed to be able to use certain types of relays and other types of electronics on the vehicle, and then the other one gives a full a full voltage, but it's a 4 amp maximum load. So all we're concerned about is the battery terminal right here to the positive side of the battery, and we're going to uh, negatively ground this machine too. So what I did, I took some scrap metal, put some slots in it, some horizontal slots, and some vertical slots. I'm going to weld them together like such. That's going to allow left and right movement and up and down movement. And once I get these welded in place, then I'll go ahead and trim these ends off whatever is necessary. If you notice that's at an angle, that's at an angle that's going to allow it to hopefully pull pull upwards as it adjusts for belt belt length, belt length and tension. That's what the plan is. So I'm going to go ahead and weld those guys up nice plumb and square and we'll move on. Okay, so here's the final bracket. I've uh, adapted that very first one that I started off with uh, simply because it just uh, worked out much more convenient this way. And you can see I still have the slots. Those slots are going to work just like I said. It's going to slide back and forth for that uh, adjustment. And then we can, we've got this slot here on the end for being able to raise it up and down. All right. Uh, you wonder probably why it's out of such a thick material. Well, Two reasons. First, that's uh, what I had in stock over there in the, in the scrap pile. And secondly, I kind of suspected that I might be able to get by with a uh, one bolt mount. And to make sure uh, that I could, I decided to go ahead and make it out of this half inch scrap material instead of a, a more flimsy or easier to work with quarter inch material, which might give a little bit of flex whenever the belt tension is on. Combine that with the fact that this alternator, I don't know the weight on it, uh, you can see, as compared to the physical size of my fist, this alternator is only about three and three quarter inches in diameter, and I don't think it tops the scale over five and a half pounds. So I think one bolt mount with the uh, with the tensioning bracket will be just fine. It's going to go right here. At any rate, uh, as long as the welds don't break, I think it's going to uh, I think it's going to work just fine. So that's the way she looks. 
here it is completely installed. Here's the new bracket. You can see the slots are a little bit too long, you know, but I didn't have anything to really go by. Um, I could have made those slots only a half an inch long and done it and then taken an inch and a half off of this, but it doesn't matter. But uh, it's nice and substantial. It's a good half inch thick scrap material. One bolt mount. As you can see up on top, the original um, tightening strap or adjustment strap that held the original generator fit perfectly. I just had to make a little bit of a notch with the grinder to compensate for a rib on the back side of this alternator. Now, if you take a look at this alternator, it's a nice neat little guy. I think it's 63 amp, I'm not sure. And it's almost exactly 4 inches. It's roughly 3 and 7 eighths inch in diameter by roughly 4 and a half inches in length. So uh, it's actually a, a pretty nice neat little alternator. So now I'm going to rip all the wiring out, hook up my one battery post right here, and uh, we're good to go. So there's a completed bracket. Uh, in retrospect, I should have made this an inch shorter, but you know, no big deal. It's not a big deal. I was able to use the uh, the bracket that was on here with the original generator, and all I had to do was put this in the little milling machine and cut a slot there because I didn't have any idea how much it had to adjust. And it was a good thing I did too because I did definitely move it about a quarter of an inch back off of the actual opening. And if you see right here, there's a rib in that. Uh, well, it's it's a big swolled up spot in the case, just exactly like this right here that was interfering with it. So instead of heating this up and bending it into an arch, I just went ahead and uh, cut that out with the milling machine and just let it set down. And I got about 3 16 inch clearance there. But uh, there it is. The belt is all nice and tight. There's no slippage on the belt. The alignment is, is near perfect on the belt. There's no problem. I've got good tension on it. Not so much tension is going to be bad on the bearing, you know, this little alternator. And uh, we're recessed in behind where that sheet metal is going to be. So now we're going to fire this puppy up and see what happens. We're going to start off with the uh, digital voltmeter sitting right here on the battery showing us static battery voltage. And like I was telling you, the cool thing about having the voltmeter that I've got installed on the dash is uh, if your battery is weakened in the winter time or sometime later as the battery gets older, it's going to show you what that battery voltage is and let you know you need to put it on a charger before you ever try to start a, an old tractor. And guess what? That's what happens when you forget to turn the gas on. But that's okay. It's all in a day's work, ain't it? Well, that pretty much wraps up the 12-volt conversion on this 1945 International H. Got a 1940H that's right in, right in the wings, right behind it. Just got it running just the other day, too. A couple things I'm not real, not real happy about. I'm not real happy with the resolution on this particular voltmeter. I got one identical to it put on that Massey Harris 30, and it reads fairly close. It's a, you know, a half a volt or so under what the voltage is. But this one here, whenever my uh, digital meter is reading 14.6 volts, I'm still just showing about 13 and a half volts on that meter. That's a, that's a full volt. I, I don't like that, but at least you can still tell that there's output and that it's charging. But at any rate, this thing here is pretty much wrapped up. I'm kind of tickled with that little alternator over there. I think we're pretty much ready to go. I, I am going to be using it with the temporary tank and of course the battery is reasonably close to permanent now may have to reroute a couple wires you know but uh, nothing's in the way of anything everything's going to be nice and secured and like I said in wire loomed with all the small wires we should be okay this has been kind of fun I think we beat this one to death this is Trackman 44 and I am out of here <laughs>